Well, let's talk about the delivery of removable prosthesis. For delivery, our prosthesis should be processed. There has been three different finer processing method. Conventional process is using the heat process acrylic or self-cure acrylic and this is conventional acrylic to make it process the finer denture. We still use for the partial denture case although we use the metal framework 3D printed we still using the base and the teeth portion using conventional process. Second method of finer processing, of course, the digital milling process is milling the already processed the puck to making shape of finer prosthesis. And third finer processing method is 3D printing. And currently, our complete denture are using printing process as a finer. Conventional process need to make flasking unit embedded into the flask and these are still prefabricated dentures on the wax pattern. And these are done in the laboratory to make a removable prosthesis. Initially, they fill the master cast onto the flasking unit, put some separating medium after the initial set for the cast flasking, and on top, cover the denture teeth with the additional stone. And this is the flask top unit. So it's upper unit and engage onto it and then fill these empty spaces with another second plaster. So this is how it looked after boiling out, meaning after you've pulled the stone and then leave it in the boiling water, it, it makes the wax all melted down and you could now disassemble the flask unit, bottom and the top, and the wax is all washed out, but you still see the denture teeth. And then, this is injection molding, one of the most accurate process of conventional processing. And you inject uh, uncured acrylic mixture into the space and then you cure for a certain time there are different processing depends on the material there's a short curing and a long curing and then once it's acrylic fully cure then you deflask to retrieve the finally processed the denture so this is all now is a processed mandibular acrylic and the maxillary and you need to segmentally break the cast out a piece by piece to retrieve this acrylic denture. And then polish. And this is how conventionally process using the heat processing acrylic. Milling process using prefabricate, pre-cure the block. So these are acrylic block that already processed and what you're doing is using uh, four or five axis milling machine to mill out to getting the denture shape. For the milling process, since it used pre-cured acrylic block, there are advantage over the conventional heat process. The regular conventional acrylic resin heat polymerization does have uh, ununiform internal 
uh, void. This we call the heterogeneous structure because of when you look at the microscopic level. But these uh, pre-processed acrylic block has much homogeneous structure internally. It doesn't look like many. Therefore, the flexor strengths and flexor modulus are better than heat polymerized resin. Another final processing is 3D printing. And after you get the STL file to print, the printing the denture base and denture teeth in the separate bath because the color cannot be mixed. So one in the left showing denture base printing and one in the right showing you the denture teeth printing. Depends on the manufacturer. The printing time will vary from 45 minutes to all the way to 3-4 hours. Once the printing is done, then the denture base cleaned out and the teeth also. And these are fit like a puzzle. So, and then when you were bonding with the same translucent bonding unit, cement, which is light cure also, and this is all same chemical components, the teeth, bonding, and the denture base. So once it's glued it together, then chemical bonding achieved and therefore the denture teeth will not be able to separate from the denture base. And this picture is showing after you glue it and uh, hand polishing on the surface. This digitally milled or printed denture could have staining to make the denture looks more live. So in the premium setting, you may do some cutback, do the internal staining, and making some layer. Of course, the layer material is all photopolymerized, uh, light cure, either composite or acrylic unit piece. And then that's how you're making digital denture customize the shape on more, um, more variable, uh, unique, natural looking color staining. And this is a uh, printed denture deliver. These day, seen more and more uh, comparison between the CAT CAM versus conventionally fabricated uh, denture. And this study was published in 2016. They compare uh, 10 uh, conventional process technique compared to the 10 testing CAT CAM uh, denture scan file superimposed and compare how accurately produced, which one is produce more accurate uh, denture base. The conclusion, CAT CAM fabrication process was the most accurate and reproducible denture fabrication technique when compared with the pack and press pore technique or injection denture based processing technique. All of those we call the conventional heat polymerization technique. Because of better uh, denture base adaptation, uh, you could expect the better retention. For example, this one it shows the mandibular denture uh, retention. Bye.
Well, after the denture finally processed and you receive the denture to deliver, this is what's happening on the delivery appointment. The first step is adjust the denture base so that the fit of the denture base is well adapted. And then second, you check the occlusion. And depends on the case, it may need a clinical remounting. If you haven't done the remounting process during the try-in appointment. And the third one is polishing and giving the post-operative instruction. Uh, you need to take carefully doing adjusting denture base. Number one, we use the mandibular denture first if you're going to deliver mandibular maxillary together. So that the fear of maxillary denture falling off before final adjustment are reduced since you are making the mandibular denture base first. And new denture require at least 10 minutes for tissue accommodation. That means to check the denture base fitting, we use the PIP paste. It's called pressure indicating paste. Before you applying the PIP onto the internal surface, you need to provide enough time for the tissue to adapt it to the new surface. Meaning, you insert the denture, you wait for about 10 minutes so the tissue could accommodate well onto the new surface before you checking with the PIP. It also use the very firm pressure when you checking the denture base. You holding the denture around the first molar area with 20 pounds which is a very heavy pressure using your own hand or having the patient to close it together holding the cotton roll in between. And then during the adjustment of denture base, careful that not, there's no need to adjust the denture border. Since we did border mold it, when the border molding procedure during the final impression was correctly molded, then there's no need to adjust the border of the denture unless there's obvious correction or error. Therefore, the correction is necessary. This is showing you how PIP application. Now, when you put a PIP, this is not where you put it, okay? PIP, you have to put it in nice one stroke movement. After you just dab it all over, make sure you don't see the the actual acrylic slowly, not in depth like that, but lightly oil painted like. Make sure there's no lines of overlap. The PIP, and I'll show you a little bit of demonstration. See how I kind of made a strict line? Small dab, but then you do you see that it's merged? Do you see that it's merged? But it's not completely wiped out. But it's lightly pressed. The lines are pressed, but they didn't go through. It went through, and the line is gone. Lines gone. Do not apply too thick amount of the PIP, like is shown on the left picture. When you apply the PIP, you apply very thin coat as described in the video. So the right picture is properly applied the PIP. And the left side is incorrectly applied. And also it's very important note. There's no need to apply the PIP on the matter framework. So one on the left picture is applied all the PIP on the matter framework and the right side you apply carefully PIP on 
only denture acrylic portion, not on the metal framework. When you look at the PIP mark, you need to be very carefully read how and where to adjust. There are, as is shown on this picture, very uniformly contact. So this is a well adapted. But around this one, when you look at all oh, every more the area to cover and even contact are idea except we call the over reliever area, that area that we do not want to have proper contact on this area. For mandibular denture, it's on the distal lingual area, including mylohyoid ridge area. And second space is mental foramen, which is located around the first bicuspid area. And also the third part is overlying sharp bony spicules. Among these, so the second third one is anatomical structure that you do not want to cover having pressure on that spot due to it causing the sore spot. Also the mandibular distal lingual area on the ridges, those ridges are non-keratinized tissue. Therefore, you having the constant pressure will cause and leading to the sore spot. Same thing on the maxillary denture. You want to even contact for all the surface except distal buccal area, which is showing right in this area. Distal buccal area and incisive papilla are the area that you want to overly relieve, meaning you do not want to have PIP mark showing showing the heavy mark. So the distal buckler inside the papilla or the maxillary denture, you need to relieve, meaning adjust further so that has, you don't see the mark on this area. So the maxillary mandibular are different when you're looking for in terms of over relief area, maxillary distal buckler, mandibular distal lingual. And also watch carefully about the mid-lingual also. The second step is checking the occlusion. How to check the occlusion on the finer denture? We instruct the patient that you wish him or her to close on the back teeth but not to touch. You will tell when to stop and look at the space and hopefully see an even amount of distance between the teeth. If the teeth are closer together on one side, it could be assumed that the side has a premature contact. So this describes when you check the occlusion, you are not using the articulating paper at the beginning. The first step that you checking the occlusion is looking at the space and see whether there's a simultaneous posterior contact or no. And then after you identify there is a possible premature contact, then you're using the articulating paper to mark where are where is located for the further adjustment. So First, checking the occlusion is by looking at the space. Slowly close. One more time, open and close. Slowly, slowly. Have you found out any premature contact or no? Well, let's take a look at in this second video. Now the first and second video on the same patient. All right. Close gently and the same thing. If you feel something touch, stop it. Open. One more time. Close. Open. 
one more time, relax, and gently close until open. Relax more, gently touch. So the difference between these two video is first one, I just have to let the patient to bite down at versus the second one, my hand is holding mandibular denture. So in this video showing my hand is holding the lower denture. My this is critical when you check the occlusion because lower denture are basically sitting on the soft tissue. So without holding it tight until you finish the occlusion adjustment, your premature contact will be easily mislead, easily missed if you are not holding it tightly to observe the space. So it is most important thing when you check the occlusion to observe and look at the space, make sure you use the hand to hold the mandibular denture seated down to check. This patient, after you check the clinical mounting, this is outside of the mouth. This is the only tooth that is holding, touching basically, premature contact, no other posterior teeth, which require a lot of adjustment. All right, so relax it, very slowly close. Gently, gently. Close, close, close. close. More, more, more. When in need, if you observe large occlusal discrepancy, that means you may need a clinical remounting so that you could adjust the occlusion outside of patient mouth. We're going to take the bite registration first. And make sure when you take this one, I'm holding the mandibular denture. And then do not have the teeth in contact. You gotta have the patient to close. Close enough, but not in the full contact. We took the CR bite registration. We're gonna mounting the denture. And this is process is the same to either printed trying denture or the finer denture, which is process. Uh, this is the preparing for the remounting cast for the mandibular and the maxillary. And we're going to mounting the maxillary first. Using the universal table, and we're going to mount the mandibular, and then we check the premature contact, and we do the adjustment. In our school. Most adjustment of this clinical remounting, if it's needed, will be done on the try-in appointment, not on the finer denture, so that you minimize clinical remounting on the finer process denture. Because we correct all the occlusion during the try-in so that you don't need to repeat the procedure again on the finer denture delivery. So this is what you usually do. Patient has a printed 3D Try in denture, and we took the CR bite on the try in denture, and we adjust this one so that final denture will have a good occlusion. Occlusion adjustment was discussed in the previous video.
you check the CO contact first, make sure that all four, four posterior teeth are in the simultaneous contact. And then lateral adjustment, you follow the BULL rule to eliminate the premature contact. So that's before you adjusting lateral adjustment. And on both sides, it's showing the canine rise. And this is after you finished adjustment. And you can see the full balance on both sides. And final polishing and post-operative instruction was given. One of the common instructions that you should tell the patient is how to clean the denture. The best solution for cleaning denture is using one teaspoon of kitchen bleach bleaching solution, sodium hypochlorite, and two teaspoons of cargon in one glass of water. The cargon is a water softener, so this is optional. If you don't patient don't have this water softener, no need it. Then Bleach will be mixed in 1 to 10 ratio and soak the denture twice a week for 20 minutes. And that's the best solution for the denture cleaning. Be careful when you're giving this post instruction. When the patient wearing the metal partial denture, do not inform about the bleaching solution because unless patient the bleaching will ruin the metal, basically it corrode the metal. Although in the clinic, uh, we don't forget to taking out from the uh, sodium hypochlorite. Therefore, we still use the same bleaching and water in the clinic, in the second floor clinic to clean the denture. But if you're giving the patient this information, patient will forget to take it out in appropriate time which is 10 to 15 minutes if the metal are in the bleaching solution for a certain time this is the picture that the metal completely corroded and you cannot clean this corrosion meaning it ended up getting the new partial denture therefore be careful this bleaching cleaning solution will not be delivered or informed to patient who has a metal partial denture. For the printing denture has a huge advantage over the conventionally processed denture, which is making second set of the denture, uh, practically just push the button of the printer from the digital file. Meaning when the patient has accidentally lost their denture or broke the denture, in those cases, we could simply reprint the denture without doing all the procedure again. So this gentleman received the denture finally, but he lost the denture. And we be able to, since we made a digital printing, we reprint the second set and it's given to the patient. Well, I want to say hello. I just had uh, my, my lower denture uh, delivered from the wonderful people at the uh, Austro School of Dentistry at USC. And I was, this is the second time that we've had, we've had it done. Um, we just did minimal amount of fitting and, and shaping, and I don't know what the right term is. They're, they're great. It's a real fantastic uh, system with this 3D printing. They were doing tires. They, they do tires with that. They do all kinds of things with that. Why don't they do it with teeth? The only, you know, I'm just really excited about it. I was so relieved to finally have lower teeth after a couple of years without them that I was just really heartbroken when they fell. And, and I, I, I texted my student doctor and it, 
was very sad about the whole thing and, and what are our options and he got back to me right away. It was a very simple process. So there's there's nothing really wrong with the the older casting put it together system. It, it was it, it was done fine and, and my, my uppers are done in that way and I've been very pleased with those, but I had them done here also, so that may be the, the determining factor. Uh, but the ease of which it's accomplished with the 3D printing system is tremendous. Uh, the more effort that goes into the, the casting and the molds and the shaping and the prep makes the delivery process so much more effective and so much more efficient. You've got a product that comes out that's in it's, it's high quality, that, that fits, that fits right, minimal amount of work to make them fit. Anybody that ever has a problem with their, their, their teeth or, or dental appliances, I, I tell them absolutely, listen, check in with the, the USC Dental School. You, it's, a, it's a long drive from where I live, but it's so worth it because you've got great people there.